Nike is one of the world's most recognisable brands, with the swoosh logo and endorsements with a number of the world's greatest athletes and teams. Phil Knight is the man behind this enormous brand, which he started by selling running shoes to athletes at the side of the track during race meets. Let's take a look at how he did it. Knight was born in 1938 in Portland, Oregon, to Bill Knight, a lawyer turned newspaper publisher, and his wife, Lotta. When his father was a newspaper editor, he refused to hire his son for a summer job, so went to work for a competing newspaper for three summers during high school. Knight also enjoyed athletics and was an athlete at high school, specialising in middle distance, and later at the University of Oregon, where he was a better than average runner, but certainly no superstar. Knight wanted to be a professional, but ultimately he was not good enough. After graduation, he did his one year of mandatory military service and then went to business school at Stanford. In his class on entrepreneurship, Knight wrote a paper on why running shoes should be made in Japan rather than Germany, igniting a crazy idea to design running shoes, citing that shoes made by Adidas and Puma were not well made. His thesis was also true in the world of cameras, where the Japanese had stolen a march on the German-dominated industry, and Knight argued that Japan could do the same with running shoes. Another motivation was when Knight ran at university. The shoes he wore were made of canvas, which made his feet bleed after only a six-mile run. He wanted to design shoes that were comfortable and improved performance. After graduation, Knight tried to get a job at a shoe company, but failed and instead trained to become an accountant. Soon after, he travelled the world, convincing his father and selling his car to fund the trip. With a crazy idea to start a shoe company in the back of his mind, Knight packed one suit for the trip, in case his idea came to fruition. Knight visited the shoe manufacturer Onitsuka Tiger in Kobe to see if they would be interested in him becoming the distributor in the United States. They were enthusiastic about the idea, despite Knight turning up to the meeting half an hour late after arriving at the shoe showroom in central Kobe, rather than the factory, and they shipped 12 samples of the shoe to Knight's newly formed company, Blue Ribbon Sport. The Blue Ribbon referring to the ribbon given to the first place runner and a name a young Phil Knight came up with on the spot when meeting the representative from Tiger in Japan. His coach at Oregon, Bill Bowerman, was always tinkering with shoes, and used some of the best runners to try these on track. Bowerman believed that the weight of the shoe was one of the most important things for a runner, and this was his main aim. When Knight sent him a pair of the Tiger shoes, they agreed via handshake to invest $500 each to start the company, with Knight running it alongside his accounting job in Oregon. In the early days, Knight went round track meet, selling the shoes out of the back of his now famous Plymouth Valiant truck at tracks around the Pacific and Northwest. They spent all the money on shoes, which cost $3.33 a pair, and a shipment arrived in April 1964. By July, Blue Ribbon had sold out, and in their first year sold 1,300 pairs of the shoes. This allowed the company to hire salesmen and grow revenue to $20,000 only two years later. Following on from this, Blue Ribbon opened their first stores in Santa Monica and Oregon. However, it wasn't all plain sailing as shoe orders from Onitsuka would be delayed as products were sold to other distributors, pushing Blue Ribbon close to financial ruin on a number of occasions. Sales often doubled month on month, but banks were reluctant to provide loans or increase their lines of credit. Their cash flow was high, but low cash reserves did not help the situation. Eventually, the banks got bored and Nike was forced to find a new provider. In stepped Nisho Iwai. Japan's sixth largest trading company worth $100 billion in sales. Despite their size, Nisho agreed to give Nike loans even after trying to convince Onitsuka to sell shoes to Nike. Onitsuka had seen Knight's early success and demanded that he sell them 51% of his company at book value or they would set up with other distributors. Unsurprisingly, Knight said no to the deal and instead agreed a 4% revenue share with Nisho and they introduced Knight to a number of shoe factories in Japan as shoe dogs. This gave Knight and his business partner an ultimatum that resulted in them setting up their own company, renaming Blue Ribbon Nike Inc. in 1971. The name was suggested by Jeff Johnson, Nike's first employee, after the Greek winged goddess of victory. 
and the now famous Nike swoosh cost a mere $35, created by graphic designer Caroline Davidson, who later worked for the company for around four years. While Knight ran business operations, Bauman was the man behind the design, cutting open tiger shoes to see how they were made and adding cushioning to improve them. His notes would be sent back to the factories in Japan with these improvements to be made. Bauman's design of the Cortez pushed the company into the mainstream, becoming the best-selling shoe in 1968, in part due to the Olympics held in Mexico City. He later designed the now-famous waffle shoe, ruining his wife's waffle iron to make the design. The rubber soles provided significantly better traction than other shoes on the market and were lighter. The original waffle, or moon shoes as they became known, debuted in red and white and the sole is still in use today. For the first 10 years of the company, they aimed to build better shoes and tried to innovate every six months, spending large sums on research and development in the labs. This spending has continued and led to more recent innovations such as the Air Max shoe and the Nike Alpha Fly Marathon shoe used to run the first sub two-hour marathon. Alongside great product, Knight introduced a culture that saw the firm introduce 10 principles similar to the 10 commandments for shoe design, which were written by Robert Strasser in 1977, and identified that product is the most important marketing tool, and that having the right people who are working towards the same goal can define if a company is successful or not. Knight was also competitive, hating his competition, and when offered the chance to meet the president of Reebok, he replied, I don't know him, I don't like him, and I don't want to like him, and he still feels the same way about the competition today. Another driver of growth was due to Knight's athletic background, where he became close to a number of former University of Oregon alumni and Olympian Steve Prefontaine, who was a legend of track and field. He was convinced to wear Nike shoes instead of Adidas by the manager of Nike's office in Eugene, becoming the company's first big-name athlete in the world of athletics. In 1973, Nike signed its first professional athlete, Romanian tennis player Ilya Nastasic, the first of many athletes who the company has signed to wear the brand apparel. Knight signed legendary golfer Tiger Woods very early on in his career after spotting his early successes in the US Amateur Championship. Nike invented Woods and his father out to lunch whenever he was playing in the Portland area trying to convince him to sign with the company for three years before he agreed. Further successes under Knight's leadership saw the company IPO in 1980, selling 2.37 million shares, the release of the first Air Jordan basketball shoe in 1985, the coining of the famous Just Do It phrase by Dan Wyden in 1988, and the acquisition of Converse in 2003 for $305 million. Knight stepped down as Nike CEO in 2004, but remained chairman, handing over the reins to William Perez. He later moved into the role of chairman at Emeritus in 2016, after retiring from the board at the age of 78. Knight remains one of the biggest philanthropists in the world, realising that he couldn't take money with him, and has passed on significant money to his alma maters, the University of Oregon and Stanford, alongside funding the Oregon Science Health Centre for cancer research. Knight identified that brands stand for something, creating an emotion in someone's mind that brings out a reaction. Ambition is what Nike stood for, and this mindset has grown the company into a dominant player in the sporting world.